The AR-15 is without a doubt one of the most popular firearms on the market today. Most people appreciate its advanced design and user-friendly controls, but many find the factory trigger pull leaves much to be desired. In this video, we'll show you how to remove the factory trigger and replace it with an aftermarket fire control group. As with any firearm, before performing any maintenance, first check to be sure the gun is completely unloaded. With the muzzle oriented in a safe direction, first remove the magazine and lock the bolt to the rear. Then, visually and physically inspect the chamber. Once you're sure the gun is unloaded and all possible ammunition sources have been removed from the work area, we can begin. To perform this simple installation, you'll need the following tools. A long screwdriver with the appropriate tip for your pistol grip screw, a 5 inch punch, a nylon brass hammer, a vise with a Brownells AR-15 lower receiver vise block, and since we'll be working with springs under tension, safety glasses. We'll begin by closing the bolt and pushing out the takedown and pivot pins and set the upper receiver aside. Before we can remove the original fire control group, we must first take off the pistol grip in order to remove the spring and detent to keep the safety selector in place. To do this, simply loosen the screw located inside the pistol grip that attaches it to the lower receiver. Once the screw is removed, pull the pistol grip away from the receiver, slowly relieving the spring tension and preferably while holding it upside down to keep from losing the detent in its spring. With the pistol grip out of the way, we can pull out the detent spring and then turn the receiver over to catch the safety detent as it falls out. With the hammer cocked to allow for more clearance and the detent in its spring removed, the safety selector can be pulled out and these parts set aside for later reassembly. Next, insert the lower receiver vise block into the magazine well and place it in the vise. With the lower now secure, we can remove the hammer. Begin by easing it forward while pulling the trigger to relieve some of the tension. Then use your 5-32nd inch punch and nylon brass hammer to gently tap out the hammer pin. With the pin removed, the hammer can now be pulled free and set aside. Repeat the same procedure to remove the trigger pin. Once removed, the trigger and the disconnector can be set aside. At this point, the receiver is ready to accept the new trigger. To install the new fire control group, begin by first confirming the correct orientation of the trigger spring, with the solid end of the spring under the trigger and the legs extended forward. Next, in the case of many USGI triggers, place the disconnector spring in its recess on the top of the trigger with the larger flared end facing downwards, followed by the disconnector oriented with its hook facing forward it should line up with the hole in the trigger. However, in the case of many aftermarket triggers, the disconnector is pre-installed. Next, place the trigger assembly into the receiver and line up the pinholes with those in the receiver. While applying downward pressure on the top of the trigger, place the 5-32nd inch punch through the holes to keep everything lined up. Then, using the nylon side of the hammer and being sure not to force anything, gently tap the pin into place. When installing the hammer, the closed end of the spring should rest on the back of the hammer. To install, simply slide the hammer into place with the tails of the hammer spring resting on top of the trigger pin and push down to line it up with the trigger pin hole. Again, use your punch to hold it in place. After you've aligned it, use the nylon hammer to tap the pin in, again making sure the spring is located properly and pushes the hammer forward. Cock the hammer and see if the trigger holds it back as it should. Next, try pulling the trigger and holding it back while controlling the hammer with your thumb to make sure it releases as it should and that the disconnector grabs the hammer and holds it when you push it all the way back. Once you're satisfied the components are working properly, the selector can be slid into place. At this point, it's a good idea to test the selector function before reinstalling the pistol grip. Hold the selector in the safe position and make sure the hammer will not fall when the trigger is pulled. Now move the selector to the fire position and see if the hammer will fall when the trigger is pulled. If everything works correctly, remove the lower from the vice block and turn the gun over, drop the detent and then the spring in the receiver. Then position the pistol grip and secure it with the screw. Once the pistol grip is back in place, repeat the function tests. If the gun will fire in the safe position at any time, the trigger is unsafe and we recommend you remove it immediately and contact the manufacturer or take it to a qualified gunsmith or armorer. 
When the installation is complete, we can reattach the upper receiver to the lower and once again test the trigger in the safe and fire modes. Now that we're satisfied the new trigger is safe and functioning as it should, we're ready to go to the range. As with any semi-auto firearm that's had the trigger replaced or modified, we recommend loading only two rounds in the magazine at first until you're completely sure that the trigger is functioning normally. By following these simple tips, you'll be able to easily install a trigger in your AR-15. Thanks for watching, and be sure to visit brownells.com today for more how-to articles and videos, along with all the firearms accessories and tools.